Hello and welcome to the channel. I'm Dave, Gamers World Resident, card game expert, Magic Gathering expert. And today I got another box opening for you, and it's the most exciting, I think, of the new cycle every time. Collector boosters, the high rollers are back. You've already seen me do a pre-release kit from this set, set booster, and now probably my favorite, collector boosters. And these have been a bit of a delight since they've been printed, to be very honest. Um, th this one I don't think quite as exciting as the Modern Horizons one and some of the others, but Collector Boosters have been an absolute delight since they've come out. I really want to dig into this one because I really like, you may have heard me uh, comment it about it, but I really like the D&D kind of alternate art cards. I don't have a fancy knife this time, so I'm just going to use my keys to dig in. So let's get, let's get it cracking. Let's, uh, let's do what you all came in here for and be a complete degenerate. My keys, they did nothing. Come on, guys. There we go. Nothing but fully professional. I have nothing, nothing else said. 12 beautiful beholders looking back at us. Keep this guy up here. Our little mascot. The 12 beautiful beholders in front of us. Let's see. What uh, collector boulder, uh, collector boulders, collector beholders, collector packs behold for us this time. You can see the majority of the pack cards in these packs are going to be foil. Nothing that noteworthy in the common, uncommon kind of uh, slot, I think, in this set. The power word pain, or power word kill, sorry, is a pretty decent card. Uh, and we're on to our first rare, which is a paladin class. It's probably going to be a nice, constructed playable, but not maybe the money we're looking for. And then we get our EDH extended art card. It's kind of still weirds me out a bit that we get EDH cards in this. Spellbook isn't great. Mimic, love that mimic art. What I'm thinking is D&D &D players can probably grab these cards and use them as like tokens in actual games. Here's an idea for you. Manticore. Ooh, look at that dragon. The alt arts on the dragons in these sets are wonderful. Something very weird about the multicolored air. Very blue because of the sky, but I love that art. And I think it's probably just appropriate in our first booster after muddling up the word beholder so many times we get an actual beholder. And a Zorin. It's probably a better way to pronounce that, but we'll put these into our D&D art slot there. Bit of a, not, I wouldn't say a bust. But uh, not the greatest pack. Very pretty, but not the strongest pack we've opened on these videos. Let's see what's next. wonder if this card will be worth a little bit of money eventually because of its kind of commander implications. I don't know if it's a... St it's not a strong commander, but it's certainly a fun commander. And uh, maybe a tiny leader? Is that still a thing? Let me know in the comments if tiny leader is still a thing. Ooh, hideous laughter. Modern staple already a very good deck in modern wow i have not seen this card yet fevered suspicion each opponent exiles cards from the top of their library until they exile a non-land card you may cast any number of those spells from among those cards rebound oh that's a good card my goodness that's a good uh edh card Okay, not that notable. Ooh, Varus. Varus is sweet. Very beautiful art, but not great. Oh, ho, ho. speaking of beautiful art. Wow. Tiamat. It's beautiful. And uh, for those of you who, uh, who didn't know, you get the full dungeon cards also in Collector Boosters. And they look absolutely sweet. It's almost worth it, I think, just for them. You should probably own them. Tiamat, though. That, that might be a high roll. I'm not sure if there's that much in the set worth that much more than a foil extended art. Tiamat. I love I, uh, Patrick Sullivan was, uh, on his podcast, Receivables, which I recommend a lot. Had a discussion recently where it's really cool that uh, when cards that aren't super competitive are some of the most expensive cards. And Commander is uh, is making that make a comeback. That like the coolest cards are the most expensive cards because so many people want them. And I think I count this Tiamat in there. Like, not maybe the best card, even from a commander standpoint. Maybe not the best card, but a cool commander. And just, like, look how beautiful it is. Don't, stupid foil quality. A little bit bent. Probably still mint. Not near mint, but a little bit bent coming out of the pack. 
and we got a, a druid of the circle that card's gonna be fantastic i i have to stop and read like all the commander cards this card already banned in a format not a very normal format it's that like rotation standard that they have in arena dungeon descent is sweet our foil guardian this might be a bit of a staple on commander as well i can see most white decks playing this so phase instead of like blink the creatures in and out probably makes it not good enough but i'd be interested to see very interested to see once we get games up and going here down uh, jervis street if those cards are good enough we of course have a very active commander community here shout out to our active commanders zorn rod of star a robe of stars Hmm. This is kind of an interesting card to protect commanders with. And now we got, oh my goodness. So you just kind of notice this. Triple books. A foil Evolving Wilds and Evolving Wilds and the Temple of the Dragon Queen. You love to see it. Dragon Turtle. I love this Dragon Turtle art. Get a load of that. Stunning. Another spell book. And foil treasure. Foil tokens. And I'm glad they've kind of stuck with the foil tokens. That's pretty sweet. Okay, commons and commons again. Nothing that noteworthy though. Temple of the Dragon Queen, I think it's just going to be better than people think with gold span dragon and stuff running around. It maybe uh, lets you be in three color dragon decks. Card that I thought was going to see a lot of play in modern. I shown up a little bit in affinity lists, but not broken yet. Treasure Vault. Ooh. Warlock Collector. Lorcan. Very normal name for a Warlock Collector, I guess. We'll go through some of our... Ooh, another, t another Tiamat. What a box. Altar Tiamat again. Not foil this time. Then we got a couple of our special cards. And this time, the Fiddlebender makes an appearance... In the rare slot there. That's beautiful. Again, I would have liked, if you had uh, listened to my other videos, I would have liked if these were a bit more worn. But I think these are still pretty good. Okay, what have we got here? Monk class. This card's very good and limited, I think, but... Not too convinced by it in standard yet. The Frost Giant or Jarl. Man, sorry if I'm delaying on some of these commander cards. Just haven't taken them all in. So many new commander cards every set to look at. But this guy looks pretty sweet. Sphere of Annihilation card that will probably see a bit of standard play. Ooh, Full Art Planeswalker. One that I think might be a little underrated at the moment. Pretty great card. White Dragon Foil. These are not worth much, but I think this is very cool. Another Full Dungeon and Triumphant Adventure, which if you've played against in the draft, you know why I hate it. The card, card's good. I'm so excited to see what cards in this set and uh, a lot of Zendikar in a big way see play post-rotation. So nothing much in the commons on commons again. A fiddle bender, bend and fiddles. What a ridiculous name to give this card. Bag of tricks, and uh, I like this card a lot. Maybe it's going to see no play, but like rogues goes out of standard soon. But there are rogues cards left, just the, the rogue deck we're used to. I think that might be strong enough. Another white dragon. White is pretty good. This card feels like a rare when you play with it in limited, but it isn't. And a foil cave of the frost dragon. That's sweet. That's pretty good. Cave, of course, and the lands like that competing with, um, oh, what's the snow creature land called again? Faceless Haven for their place of relevance and standard. Nothing much here. Foil instrument of the bar. Love this art. Don't think of much of it as a card, but absolutely love that art. Investigate. Ooh. This is a sweet card. Man, so many of the commander cards I haven't 
thought the Kachok would are pretty uh, sweet. Miller Red Dragon. Volo, completely unbeatable and limited, and possibly some implications, I think, in standard as well. Just a very big combo card, kind of value card. For those of you old school players uh, amongst us, like me, it reminds me a bit of a deck called uh, Next Level Bant, where there was just so many value cards. And I think it could be one of them. This also is very nice. Circle of the Dream of Druid. I think every like non-super competitive uh, commander player is going to want them for some sort of green deck. You'd have to be pretty heavily in green. But it's a lot easier to come across than Gaia's Cradle, of course. The Bandit, uh, the Hobgoblin Bandit Lord Bandito. That's a very uh, entertaining Spanish name that I can't recite completely, but I'd recommend looking it up. Ooh, Grave Endeavor has sweet art. Flimph doesn't. I'm not a fan of this card. Get out of here, Flimph. Probably a fantastic uh, commander card. Another white, uh, white creature land in the Cave of the Frost Dragon. Very nice. Another foil Dungeon Descent. Not as nice. Dungeon Descent, probably the worst of the foils in that land slot. What have we got here? Ooh. Another foil Dungeon Descent in a different art. Get out of here, Dungeon Descent. I'm sick of you. Another Fiddlebender. He knows how much I love the name. And our White. Card White seems like it could be a good aggressive card. Sorry if the, I just noticed uh, the light bouncing off the foils here, making them a little harder to see. Sorry about that. White is a... Uh, Maybe a good aggressive card for later because you need to point a removal spell at it. You can't trade it with a creature. So pretty great in uh, creature matchups. This is going to be an all-star. I don't know how much money this is worth at the moment. But I think this is an EDH all-star for the future. You know, maybe keep keep your copies. Don't sell them if you open them. Look at Chaos Dragon. That is sweet. That is a pretty cool card. Sorry, just kind of staring at it. Speaking of deck of many things, is a bit of a weird inside joke to to Magic the Gathering itself in the set. Another white. Ooh. Well, I have no idea if this card is actually going to end up being good. People have tried it to mix results in modern and standard so far. What an extended art demiage. I'll get this a bit closer to the camera. Is so nice. It's teeth are like they look like grills, man. It's absolutely amazing. And full dungeon. That's probably one of the more expensive cards. I don't know if it's gone down yet because, as I said, I don't know if the consensus is that it's a good card. Still, probably arguments out about that. I think you could still probably uh, mess around with it a bit in standard and find out, especially with the Innistrad set uh, coming out. But at the moment, it doesn't seem to be seeing the most play. Then the other question is, is it good in um, Limited? Uh, not Limited, in, uh, what did I say Limited? In EDH, which very much could be. Hideous Laughter and Ward of Oculus, both really cool cards. Ending up with a Den of the Bugbearer. And a bit of a mediocre pack at the end there, but I don't think we can complain because, as I said, we got the old Demo Lich here. Two of the coolest pulls in the, in the set. I don't know if they're the most expensive, but they're, they're certainly the sweetest in Tiamat and Demilich here. Ooh, sorry, shaking the camera a little. Just fantastic, and uh, I don't think I could be much happier with this pack. Thanks so much for watching. We really appreciate it. I know these are a bit on the shorter side because of the nature of the, of the box with only 12 packs, and there isn't too much to talk about in this set that I haven't talked about in the other videos. But, uh, like and subscribe, it really supports the shop, it really supports the channel, and we would love to be doing more content, especially some reviews maybe of Magic products opposed to just openings. But if you're just enjoying openings, tell us, comment, tell us what you'd like to see more of. But until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll see you then.